In this module, we're going to be looking at using gene signatures and creating signature scores. Uh, to start with, we're going to be using the neuroblastoma data set consisting of 88 tumors, and we're going to look at an analysis called the k-means or k-means clustering. So if you select under type of analysis and go down to meta-analysis, we're going to select k-means and click next. Here the correct data set is already selected for us, so we can simply click select. And now you are presented with the adjustable settings uh, in order to run the k-means analysis. In simple terms, k-means clustering is a clustering algorithm that is used to subdivide a data set into a predefined number of groups. Uh, in this case, we're going to be dividing the data set into two groups, and we're going to be dividing it based on the expression of a specific gene signature. So under gene filters, we're going to select our gene signature, and under gene sets, we're going to go in and select R2 provided gene lists, uh, and then functional gene signatures. And under functional gene signatures, if you click one more time, you see here that you have a gene signature labeled IMR32 MCN all, consisting of 157 genes. These specific genes are derived from an experiment of the neuroblastoma cell line IMR32, which has had uh, the deletion of MCN. So these are the 157 genes that were either up or down regulated following deletion of MCN in IMR32. So we're going to select this data set. Uh, and again, leaving the number of groups of k-means clustering to 2. Uh, and the number of draws or number of repetitions of the clustering at uh, 10 by 10. And we are going to click Next. So you can see that we are presented then with a heat map. And at the top of the heat map, you can see that there are subcategories that are listed as k-means. So the top one, which is labeled k-means, shows you which uh, specific k-means cluster or group each sample or column is placed into. Uh, so you can see here that you have it divided into two groups, one group being the yellow group and one group being the purple group. And below that, you can see the classification of each sample through each round of repetition of k-means. So you can see that there were certain samples that in certain rounds were classified as part of group 2. However, the overall uh, clustering was defined into group 1 in this case uh, for this specific sample. Um, so what you can see is that through the different rounds, the majority of uh, samples are clustered within the same cluster in each round, suggesting that uh, these clusters uh, that are defined through the k-means algorithm are quite stable. So if we then look down below, we have all the genes, the 157 genes that are contained within the gene signature, uh, and you can see that they are somewhat divided into two different groups. You have one uh, subgroup of the genes, which seems to be higher in the group one of the k-means, and you have another group uh, that seems to be higher in the second uh, group of samples. Um, if you then look at what these samples actually are, what you can notice here is that if you look specifically at MCN amplification, you do have a, all of your MCN amplified tumors in group 2. What is interesting about this is that you also seem to have a number of other samples which are not MCN amplified, however they are clustering together with the MCN amplified uh, tumors. So considering that the genes that are contained within this gene signature were derived from a MCN functional experiment, what this does suggest is that these specific samples that do fall into the same cluster as MCN amplified tumors seem to be behaving in the same way as MCN amplified tumors or have the same uh, MCN signature, if you will, as, as these MCN amplified tumors. Um, so this is one way that you can use k-means clustering in order to look into how specific gene signatures are represented in your data and how this can be used to then split your data up into subgroups. And by splitting your data up into subgroups, you are defining a categorical classification for each sample. So a group one versus group two in this case, uh, based on the gene signature that you are using. Um, another approach to using gene signatures is that you might want to define a numerical or continuous uh, measurement per sample. So that way you get an estimation of how strongly a gene signature is expressed in each sample. In order to do this, we're going to create signature scores. And in order to do a signature score, we're going to go back to the main page. Uh, we're going to 
Again, look into the same data set using the same gene signatures that we've looked into already, except this time we're going to go into meta-analysis and we're going to look at view gene set or heat map under meta-analyses and click next. Uh, so again, we're going to select the R2 provided gene list and we're going to click next. And under the uh, sub collection of gene sets, we're going to select functional gene signature, click next one more time. And here again, we are presented with a list of the different signatures that are available uh, to us to select. So you'll notice here that under gene sets, we do have the gene set that has 157 genes, which is the one we looked at in the previous k-means analysis. Um, and this consists of all the genes that were either up or down regulated in this MCAN experiment in the neuroblastoma cell line IMR32. What you can notice as well is that below it, uh, from the same experiment, we have a subset that is labeled as DN, or down-regulated, and a subset that is labeled as up. Uh, so this is the same 157 genes divided into two separate signatures that, that is down-regulated and up-regulated in the experiment. And we are going to select both of these two by simply uh, holding shift or control while you select both two. Um, and for the uh, range of color scale in the heat map that we're going to view, I'm going to set that to one uh, simply to intensify the differences between the, the groups that we look at in the heat map. And then we're going to click next. We are now presented with our heat map of the two gene signatures that we've used, both the MCN up and down. And what you can see here is that we have, again, a group of patients that are MCN amplified, which seem to have high expression of a subset of genes, which if you look over here on the right, does correspond with genes that were included in the MCN up signature. Uh, if you then scroll further down, you can see that there are uh, a subset of genes amongst samples that are from the MCN down signature, which again are higher expressed in the non-amplified tumors. Uh, just the same as we saw in the k-means clustering, we do have a subset of tumors that are not MCN amplified that do cluster together uh, with the MCN amplified tumors, uh, as well as our high expressors of the subset of genes that are contained within the MCN up uh, regulated signature. So if we then scroll down to below the heat map, what you can then see here is that we have a Z score or signature score for each of the two gene signatures that we uh, defined or used in this analysis. Uh, so you do get one for the up uh, regulated signature as well as one for the down regulated signature. And this is essentially the Z score for each of those signatures for each sample. What you will also notice is that below both the up and the down, you do get something that is labeled W match. And now what the W match is, is that this is a weighted signature score that is essentially the up regulated signature minus the down regulated signature, which have been adjusted for uh, the number of samples in, in each of these groups or size adjusted. Uh, so this is the overall signature score of both the up and down regulated. And in order for this to be calculated, when you do use one of the gene set analyses, you must have the same signature divided and labeled as both up and down or up and DN, uh, which was in the case uh, that we used here. So if we scroll down a little bit further, what you can then see is that you do have the option to save these signature scores, uh, either as a text file, so the individual value for each sample, or you can store them in R2, which will then be stored as a track in your data or as a pseudo gene uh, that can then be used as a single continuous numerical value uh, for each sample uh, that we will then use for uh, downstream analyses. And we'll show you how to do that. So we're going to click on store in R2. And now we are going to store this signature uh, as a track. And you can have the option of storing it either as a temporary track or as a personal track. So I'm going to, in this case, store it as a personal track, and I'm going to label it uh, IMR32 MCN weighted signature. And we are then going to click build set. So if we return to the heat map page, you can see that there was also the option to save each individual up or down signature. Uh, but now we have showed the example of, of saving the overall weighted signature, which we can then use as a proxy for MCN uh, activity within these samples. So in order to look at how we will use this in downstream 
analyses, we're going to return to the main page. And we're going to start by looking at a relate to track or a track by track uh, comparison within the data using this MICN uh, signature score that we have just saved. So we're going to click relate to tracks and click next. So here we are presented with the option of selecting the two tracks that we would like to uh, relate to one another. So on the y-axis, we are going to now put our uh, MIC and weighted signature, which is now uh, able to be found under the user-defined uh, tracks. So I'm going to select that one for the y-axis. And on the x-axis, just to start off, we're going to look at MIC and amplification, just to show uh, that it is, in fact, uh, related to MIC and amplification, these samples. Um, and we're going to view this as a box plot and click next. So here we are presented with the box plot of our signature score on the y-axis uh, and MIC and amplification on the x-axis. And here you can clearly see that uh, the expression of your MIC and signature score is much higher in those that are MIC and amplified. And you have the associated p-value pre uh, presented to you as well. So while this does serve as a positive control, so that indeed we do see higher MIC activity in those that are MIC and amplified, uh, we can also correlate this with other tracks uh, present in the data set. For instance, we might want to have a look at how it compares to uh, the different stages of neuroblastoma disease or the INSS classification. So we can click on that for x-axis and we can adjust the graph. And here again, we can see that specifically in the stage four subset of tumors, which are the more aggressive uh, tumors of neuroblastoma, that you do have a higher MICN activity or a higher expression of your signature score in this subgroup of patients. Um, and this is, again, a significantly higher uh, expression detected. So now we've looked at how this uh, signature score can correlate to tracks that we have uh, in our data. Um, and we have seen that high expression of our signature score does correlate with high stage of the disease. So what we may now want to look at is how our signature score is related to uh, overall survival or prognosis in these patients. Uh, so in order to do that, we're going to return to the main page. And we're going to make use of the Kaplan-Meier uh, analysis, which we have gone through in another module. Uh, so if we look at Kaplan-Meier on the left, you can see that we can select both Kaplan-Meier by track which is a category and numeric. And now our signature score itself is a numeric or continuous variable. So we're now going to select Kaplan-Meier uh, by track numeric. And we're going to scan our track, uh, which means we will uh, define the optimal cutoff uh, automatically using the scan approach. And the track we are now going to select to use is our weighted uh, MIC and signature score. And we are now going to click next. So here we are presented with our Kaplan-Meier plot, uh, and you can see that high expression of our MCN signature score is associated with a poor prognosis. Uh, now, interestingly, I have uh, brought up a couple other plots here that we can compare to. So this is using our signature score, uh, and you can see uh, the associated statistical uh, significance down here. If I then switch to looking at MCN amplification uh, by itself, you do see a large uh, separation between uh, amplified and non-amplified with regard to overall survival. However, this separation is not as significant as using our uh, signature score, and nor is uh, looking at MCN expression itself. Uh, so it does seem that our signature score, uh, which measures uh, MCN activity, um, seems to be the best uh, predictor of prognosis with regards to um, measuring MCN in neuroblastoma. So now we've looked at how we can make use of our signature score and how it correlates with different characteristics or tracks within our data, as well as uh, overall survival. But what you might also want to know is how does this signature correlate with other signatures or other uh, pathways within uh, your data set. Uh, so in order to look at this, we're going to return to the main page. And now we're going to select under meta-analysis, gene set versus gene set correlation. So we are now going to look at our specific uh, MCN gene set and how it correlates to other gene sets. Um, another 
way that you could do this is by using track versus gene set, in which case we could use our specific gene signature score to see how it correlates with other gene signatures. However, I'll describe to you why we're going to choose gene set versus gene set in this case uh, in a little while. So we're going to set gene set versus gene set, click next. And now as our input gene set, we are going to select the R2 provided gene lists, and we are going to compare this to how uh, the expression of hallmarks of cancer from the Broad Institute uh, are expressed, and click next. Um, and as a subset of our gene signatures, we're going to select functional gene signatures and compare it to all the different uh, Broad Institute hallmarks. And now you can see again that we have the option of selecting uh, a subset of our gene signatures, and we are again going to select both the up and the down uh, together uh, in order for it to calculate a signature score uh, the same way that we have done previously, and click Next. So because we have provided with both an up and down regulated uh, gene list as an input, it does calculate the weighted uh, signature score as we described before uh, using the uh, gene set view. Um, and this now correlates this weighted score with all of the different hallmark uh, subsets uh, that were available from this uh, broad institute. And what you are provided here is you're provided with the Pearson R correlation between your signature score and signature scores from these um, other predefined signatures, as well as you are provided with information of the overlap uh, between the different uh, gene signatures. So here you can see that our gene signature had 149 unique, uh, three overlapping with uh, 53 unique to the target gene set, which would be MIC and uh, targets. So this, first of all, serves as a positive control because our MIC N signature, in fact, does correlate most highly with a MIC N or, or a MIC target uh, signature with a Pearson value of 0.9. And you can also view uh, these correlations in the XY plot by simply clicking on the XY uh, plot. And here we are then presented with a uh, two gene or two signature score uh, plot and the correlating uh, statistics with it. So if we then return to our gene set by gene set correlation list, uh, you can also see that you do have uh, some that are negatively correlated, for instance, uh, and, and all of this information uh, is provided for each individual gene set. Um, another interesting uh, piece of information that you can extract from this is that while our gene set is positively associated with uh, MIC targets, which is a positive control, you can also see that it does also correlate with uh, E2F and G2M phase uh, genes, which does then um, suggest that it is correlated with um, cellular proliferation and cell cycle. And again, the overlapping genes between the two signatures are quite uh, small in all these cases, which means that the correlation that is detected is not due to uh, the gene sets measuring the same genes. So in this module, we have looked at using predefined gene sets uh, in order to create gene signatures and gene signature scores. Um, and of course, R2 does allow you to create your own uh, gene signatures uh, and scores from these gene signatures, and that uh, information will be provided in the Adapting R2 module.